Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another speaker panel here at the Life School. I'm so blessed to be back with you with another amazing lineup of amazing speakers, all purpose-driven entrepreneurs, people that are doing amazing work out there in the world. But before we jump right into the conversation um, of our event today, um, so that you can walk away with great nuggets of inspiration and things that you can connect for your purpose and your profit, I would like to remind you that this event is brought to you by The Life School. And at The Life School, we help purpose-driven leaders to build a legacy company that does more good in the world through the operations of branding, marketing, sales, systems, and team. Our vision is to empower purpose-driven leaders to become... Um, to actually use their life's purpose through legacy entrepreneurship. And then our mission is to become the most impactful global community in purposeful entrepreneurship. And then lastly, what's a community with no values? Our values are community connection, service, and contribution. So without further ado, and thanking all my amazing speakers here today, because I know very, I value everyone's time. I think time is one of the most important things that we have as human beings. Uh, I want to thank all my speakers ahead of time here today for their knowledge, expertise, value add that they will uh, be able to share here. So without further ado, I'd like to start with Eileen. I have her right next to me on the screen, Eileen Dillon. And Eileen, let's start with where are you physically based first? And can you share a few of the most meaningful moments that you know lead you to the work that you do so that we get a better idea around the service that you actually are providing to other people through your business? Absolutely, thank you. Uh, well, my base of operations is a 24 foot RV. I travel North America in it, have been doing that for eight years. I'm currently speaking to you, I'm visiting my son in Northern California, so that's where I am right now. Um, and I've been a psychotherapist for 50 years, 51 years now, and uh, a transpersonal psychotherapist. And I'm also a recovered angry person. And that is what has led me to the work that I am now doing and offering to others. I discovered 50 years ago, as many people who are angry, I didn't realize I was angry until I had a terrible experience uh, essentially, my husband left me and my 10-month-old child and said he was finished. Uh, and I was suddenly in the world on my own with no support and so forth. And frankly, it pissed me off. Um, and uh, so uh, it, it was so much, you know, if you, we are all taught to hold on to anger. And when we do, it's like water that we put a dam across. It builds up inside of us. So it... It just started flooding out of me, and I started looking for answers. Why do we have anger? Uh, where does it come from? Uh, what can we do about it? And it took me about 15 or 20 years to figure it out. And now I talk about and share with people the whole process of realigning with anger uh, or with emotions. I discovered an entire system of emotions. It's really quite simple, uh, but we are totally out of alignment with emotions. I don't have to uh, expand on that. Just look at the headlines. Uh, and we need to come back into alignment because we are now moving into our new ways of being and our energy bodies and emotions are energy. And that's the fastest way to move on. And uh, Alona, I love the life school. I teach people that Earth is a giant school. We all come here in order to learn and grow. And emotions right now, because they're energy, are the fastest way to grow into the lives that we want to lead. I love this. I love your mission, Eileen, with uh, anger management. I think we all skip the class of um, emotional management, at least from my own school of life and traditionally where I went to school and all of that. Um, and uh, it's almost like we have to relearn how to manage our emotions because sometimes whether, you know, we're entrepreneurs and we're taking this out on our clients or we're taking out our anger on our team or our community, right? And I know we're more mindful of that, obviously. Usually it's those close relationships that kind of trigger us. And we kind of blow blow off steam in the wrong situation. And we can hurt those relationships. I love the mission of 
uh, the process as a solution that you have created now that you're helping other people that are looking to maybe struggle with this and is showing up in other areas of their lives. So I'm I'm so curious to kind of hear a little bit more around your process. So what what is that solution that you have perfected over time, I'm sure, um, because that's usually what happens that you could share with us around the process of anger management and overcoming and aligning anger, I guess, towards what you tell us. I, I'm not sure what you know that okay. would be, but uh, using anger I guess for a good purpose so that it drives us, but now that it's obviously hurting us and hurting mm -hmm. our relationships, but mm -hmm. yeah, take it away. So, so let me start by saying that I personally don't talk about anger management. I think that's like breaking a horse as opposed to being a horse whisperer. I talk about anger mastery. I want us to be in charge. I want us to know how to work with anger in such a way that it, it, it fulfills the purpose that it has been designed for, that we've lost track of. I don't know if on the earth anybody's ever uh, known about this purpose or worked with it. Uh, I don't see a lot of people doing it right now myself. Anger, uh, what happens in this giant school we're talking about? Uh, it, we've all come here to learn, and how do we learn? We learn by having experiences. And every experience gives us, uh, has embedded in it, a lesson, an opportunity to learn something. And when we have an experience, emotion rises up with it. It can be anger, it can be fear, it can be love, whatever. But that emotion actually bears a mes message. Every emotion bears a message for us. For example, loneliness. We think of loneliness as uh, we need more people in our lives. Well, when you know that lo that all emotions are energy, actually the purpose of loneliness is to point out to us that we have more energy going out than coming back in, meaning we're not loving ourselves enough. Hmm. And you can correct loneliness merely by doing something you love, by doing a um, by doing a, something that you have a talent for doing. In fact. Sometimes if I feel lonely as I'm driving in my van, I can imagine doing something I love and the loneliness will disappear. And in this way, we, every, what we're really trying to do, Ilona, is to uh, work with emotions the way they're designed to work. And they're designed as messages and as helpers. There are, there's no such thing as a negative emotion. The only time emotion like anger becomes negative is when we block it, like I talked about before, and it builds up. And then it has the potential for violence and, and destruction. Uh, and also, I would like to add that one thing I think is important, since emotions are energy, I advise people not to claim them. It's not my anger or my hate or my fear. It's the fear that came up in me, the anger that I felt. Because when I claim it, I tend to keep it to me. And if emotions are energy, that means they need to move. We know we can't create them and we can't destroy them. We know they can move into something else. Like anger, when it transforms, becomes enthusiasm. And so that's the level on which uh, I, which I call mastery, and on which I am, uh, I'm living my own life. Have been for about um, mm, close to thirty-five years now, um, and I have been helping people everywhere. Everywhere I go in my RV, I talk to people about emotions. <laughs> <laughs> I love your mo lifestyle, right? With the fact that we can we get to do that as long as we have Wi-Fi, we get to impact people. And this is the amazing part of just you know spaces that we're creating or rooms like this or our social media channels or any of the other windows that we get to to use to to share our message. Because I always uh, I always share that is there's always two ways that we can impact others or at least share our learnings from our school of life and our experience which is through speaking or, or uh, writing. So thank you so much for sharing that. Those are amazing insights and just a peek of, I'm sure, all the depth of the work that you do. And thank you for sharing it today. I'll definitely come back to you at the end for more. Okay, thank you.
My pleasure. Thanks so much, Eileen. I would love to go to my next speaker today, Duncan. Duncan, I I I know you are uh you have come back here at the, our live school events and I don't want to butcher your last name. So instead of me introducing you, please share your name with us. Well, it's it's not the easiest, is it? It's uh Baskaran Brown, Duncan Baskaran Brown. And I'm I'm happy to be back. Thank you so much for coming back. I love the work and the mission that you're after as well. So for all the new people that are watching today and for the amazing new lineup of speakers that we're blessed to have here at the Life School, can you share a few of the most meaningful moments behind the work you do so that we can get to know you better? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, do, I love the work that I do. So some of what I do is one-to-one -one work, which is helping people to you know, start living again. I, often they think I'm helping them to stop drinking, but really what we're doing is is helping them to start living again. And, you know, you can't, you cannot, I don't think you can actually get anything better than when somebody just turns around to you and says, do you know what, Duncan, if it wasn't for you, I would be dead right now. And that's sort of like, I don't know where you go from that. <laughs> As a testimonial, it's pretty good, isn't it? And uh, it's enormously rewarding. So the work I do, that aspect of it, I, I absolutely love. Now more and more stuff we're doing uh, with organizations and businesses and companies and trying to help get at the people who are drinking in the middle. You know, they're not they're not problem drinkers. They don't they don't need me to stay alive, um, but they are drinking uh, more than they should be. They're not drinking in that low risk, high pleasure category. They're drinking in the, the moderate risk and the kind of the more problems are, are coming in. So that's what we're doing at the moment, trying to trying to get to those people who are in the middle. Oh, Duncan, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, changing lives, talk about that mission. But a natural question that I have for you is maybe for people that, you know, we all obviously we have maybe role modeling or heard about, you know, uh, people dependent on alcohol. But can you just kind of define, you know, for people where when is it where is that fine line that you mentioned that you have a problem that maybe you need support to kind of, you know, help support you through? And where is the second occasional drink that you know, it's not really impacting you in negatively. Like, at least for me, I, I need to know, like, if there's a specific process in that, you know, journey so that people can kind of, you know, understand that, okay, maybe this is something that I can get support for. See, the, 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 the thing is, everybody wants this answer, which would be 19.6 uh, kilograms of alcohol a week. After that, you know, you're in trouble. But unfortunately, uh, it is really genuinely not that simple. What, what I would say to people is we talk a lot about problem drinking. And that makes it really, really simple because if you are drinking and it is causing you problems, then it's problem drinking. I mean, that's, that's all it is, isn't it? It's drinking with problems, which is kind of simple. So if you are worried about it, then even that worry is causing you a problem. So just the fact that you're concerned, I think is enough that it means you should you should take action. What what I would say really safe drinking looks like low risk drinking, uh, which if you look at all of the science and we've extensively reviewed the alcohol recommendations from across the world, what we would say low risk drinking looks like is one drink, maybe two or three times a week. Okay, thank you so much for clarifying that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's also, you know, the way that somebody feels about it and if it's getting in the way. What are some of the main issues that you've seen with your work and how, how this actually shows up in people's lives? And what are some of the solutions that you're able to provide for your clients that you could share with us? So the, the main problems that, that we find, they kind of tend to, to revolve around things like energy and focus. And that, of course, impacts productivity. They also tend to revolve around mood and empathy, and that tends to uh, impact relationships with other people, and that has a knock-on effect to team morale and things like that. But we're also seeing a lot of issues these days around culture. So, for example, a lot of high performers now don't drink. They don't drink because they know that high performance is, is incompatible with alcohol, so they just don't drink. And what they're finding is they're going into certain industries and they're finding it really difficult to find 
a, a good home because there are some industries um, where there is a lot of drinking goes on and that kind of puts them off. So they're being very selective about the companies that they're looking for. We're also seeing a lot of issues around um, equality and diversity around alcohol. So the, the pr primary reasons why people don't drink alcohol revolve around things like race, religion and age. So if you're looking to increase the diversity of your company, then taking a look at, you know, how you present yourself uh, to the world in terms of alcohol consumption, how you run your events, how you celebrate things with your staff. That's becoming such a huge issue in business at the moment. Mm. And I love that, you know, the awareness is rising as well, even though with the bigger corporations that I work with, there's definitely a. Uh, Sometimes, you know, it's, it's changes that we're made to kind of take a look at. And sometimes it's changes that as the, the awareness level of the leaders increases, then we start to see things differently. And we start to really dive into some of those issues that we might have with our teams as well. Um, so that re rather than pushing away and putting things under the carpet, so it all looks good from the outside, we're actually dealing with the the actual uh, root causes of a lot, lots of the issues that can impact um, any company or any any person personally in our personal lives, right? Because I always say we're humans first and then we take ourselves to work or to the business or anywhere else that we uh, we are. So thank you so much, Duncan, for what you just shared as well and the amazing work that you're doing out there. I'll absolutely come back to you at the end as well. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. The pleasure's all mine. I would love to go to my next panel speaker, um, Andra Annette. Andra, thank you so much for coming on. And let's start with where is it that you're based before you share uh, the some of the impactful things that you're doing with the work uh, with your work as well. Um, in New York. Oh, another fellow New Yorker. Mm -hmm. love it. We might meet live in person and grab coffee. Look at that. It's a small. I world. would love that. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Andra, what is it that you do uh, with the, the impact that you get to have on other people? I'm a leaky gut, thyroid, and weight loss expert. I've been in healthcare over 40 years now as a nurse, and I'm also a holistic practitioner. So for me, it's kind of a mix of finding that match, having the inside match the outside, tracing those pathways with what's wrong in their system, and a lot of times, most of my work is having their emotions match because along the way, they've lost a lot of confidence thinking something, you know, um, they lose their confidence believing that they can't do it. And a lot of times it's just because they really haven't found what's right for them. And there's a lot of misconceptions that one diet is for everybody or one exercise is for everybody. So it's really about meeting them where they're at and finding what's right for them and putting them back in the body, body they love that's going to support them through the lifespan, you know? So um, I love what I do. I've been at this a really long time. So um, this, these are all things that I have experienced and healed in myself. So to thy own self be true, kind of. Yeah, I always say health is our wealth, right? And then it's like an area that there's always new information always coming out and people are living their experiences. And I think as the more we personally develop, more raise our awareness, we can absolutely, you know, figure out that our body is very actually smart. And, and the more we, we get in touch and tuned with our emotions and our physical sensations and the things that uh, awareness brings the more we get to maybe problem solve a lot of the issues that are showing up for all of us. Andra, in your day-to-day -day work with your clients, how is this issue hurting, you know, or impacting your potential clients? And what are some of the solutions that you get to offer for them? It's really about letting them let go of a lot of the things they're holding on to because sickness in the body is really connected to those emotions that Eileen was talking about and holding on to angers and resentments. Those are what really cause 99% of the disease in the body. The physical will match the, the internal, the emotional, when you let go of that and realize that you really can create anything you want in your health. We are 
born creators. And when we are in tune with our bodies and that matches, then we really can achieve health and wellness. But it is about connecting to yourself and feeling your body and what it's really saying. Your body knows the way, but the body will only do what the mind tells it to do. So, and your mind only believes what you tell it. So if you tell yourself that you can really achieve whatever goal you're after, you will. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of people stay in a very negative space and that has a lot to do with our exterior world, things that we've heard throughout our lives. And we're left in a place feeling like that we're not good enough or we can't achieve things or from the, from the moment as children, we're told to look outside of ourselves for answers. But when we start to look in, all of those answers are there. So it's really just about reconnecting with that. So that's really how I help most of my clients. I mean, I can help anyone lose weight, but if they don't feel like they deserve that, if they don't put themselves first or believe that they should put themselves first, because it is really self-care, then they're not going to achieve that or they're not going to keep it because most of the times when people are in that state where they're not well, it's because they got busy. We all do. Life happens. And we start, you know, we're those yes people. We don't set boundaries. And all of those things contribute to how well we show up for ourselves. So when we start showing up for ourselves, things will get better, not just in our own body, but in our relationships, in our vocation. So in our business, certainly when I'm stressed out, I'm not doing as well in my business. So I got to rein it in. It, it goes for me too. So um, it's mm -hmm. practice. It's, it's not an overnight thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. I love the holistic approach you take, by the way, because most people, you know, will probably come from the pain for the pain point of I just want to lose weight. <laughs> but underneath, obviously, you're helping them uh, completely transform also the mindset and the relationships that they get to have with their body, their physical body as well. So my natural question for you, Andra, based on your experience and expertise is how can we better connect with our body? You have to be intentional. So there's a lot of people talking about mindful eating, but mindfulness plays into every aspect of your life. Sitting down and doing things intentionally and being where you are when you're there and, and respecting that time. If, if you have five minutes to just really be in that moment and pause and step into where you are when you're eating, we, you know, everybody does everything on the go. Everybody's in a rush to to go here, to get this done, to do that. But if you just spend that time where you are and enjoy where you're at in this moment, it does make things easier. Enjoy your food while you're eating. Savor that taste and, and develop that relationship with food where it's taught that food is bad. It's not bad. It's the proportions we're having, the quality that we're having. So there's always better choices and sometimes we're, we're not taught them, but once we are, we really do have to accept responsibility and say, you know, there's a better choice to be made and, and start making them. And yeah, we're happy, but, right? <laughs> I guess I, I know I language. feel great when I was <laughs> 300 pounds, I yeah. certainly didn't feel the way I do now. So um, that's what kind of drives me because I was depressed. I was miserable. I, I wasn't making good choices. It was affecting everything in my life. So I know the difference in how I feel today and just sitting and enjoying where I am. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I was going to say, I mean, I, I need to hear that today. You spoke my favorite word, international, you know, being intentional. Uh, some some my internationality. It's not it, being intentional uh, with, you know, our time. And it's, it's definitely the challenge of the world that we're living in today with you know, we all know what happens um so we have absolutely, absolutely have to be very intentional with um kind of you know listening to some of the red flags that are in front of us and not to be afraid of negative emotions as well and honestly the inner work that i've done it's all been about um listening to my emotions and allowing that to happen so <laughs> 
I love the work you do. And thank you so much for sharing what you just did with us. Thank you. All right. Love to say hi to uh, Hepsia next. Hepsia, what is your last name? I don't think it's on your Zoom room there. So hi, and thank you so much for coming on. Hi, my name uh, is Hepsi Godin, and I am based in Devon in the UK. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. So I would love to, let's get a, get us started with some of the, the most meaningful moments that led you to the work that you're doing. Okay, so uh, I am a female leadership marketing and business strategy consultant. I have come to this by working in middle management uh, or senior leadership teams whilst having a family and also running my own product-based business for over a decade and realising that women are incredibly successful in the workplace now but what we need to do is influence change and change the way that we work not only to align with ourselves and minimize the amount of burnout that's happening but also to minimize the gap between the current successful businesses and leaders and the new generation that are coming up into employment mm. Oh, I love that. That's absolutely a big gap. And every day I feel like we're getting closer to obviously filling it, uh, but it's there. So what are some of those issues that you've seen in your work that you can that you can share with us around that the gap that we talked about? So um, I'm at, my, my niche is definitely working with successful women that however, what how my methodology is basically creating curiosity and awareness around the programming of how people operate in business and the majority of it is very masculine compared to feminine and my approach is not to say that one is better than the other my approach is literally to create awareness and curiosity as to how you can create your own rhythm i think what a lot of people do is it's very polarized in in the masculine capitalist kind of society that we've been brought up to with because that's what we were told to do and from a female point of view we entered the mark the workplace which was designed and created for men so we were thank you very much we'll do, we can do this so we will operate in a masculine way so my like I said my methodology is about creating your own rhythm and questioning the whys the wants and your values not only at a personal level but also a business level yeah, absolutely. Well, we're all feeling it, even though, you know, we're not, um, most of us don't, might not have the words uh, to, you know, kind of understand what's happening at the macro level. Um, so I love the changes. Obviously, you know, any change will come with its growing pains for sure, so that we can get on the other side. But yeah, it's all about harmonizing. We need both. We need the doing and we need the being, right? But we need to learn the being more than the doing and align both of those together because you know always my uh conflict with this let's call it topic as you know in the beginning uh level stages of my awareness was always around well how am I going to get the stuff my stuff done like I always see that I say I got to do stuff so that I can get a create a certain result uh but the harmonizing of both the more you learn about this it's absolutely where we're heading so I'm glad that you know as a society we're all understanding the importance of harmonizing both because both are necessary. So uh, just like the left brain and the right brain, and some of us are more dominant in one or another, but you can develop uh, both. And we're human beings at the, at the end of the day anyway, right? Um, so I think it's definitely time. And how about with marketing? How do you connect that to marketing based on how you introduce yourself? How do you help with marketing and aligning some of this? So I, like I said, um before the my methodology is very much about the person as well as the business if the person is need if the business is needing to change not um the person that's leading the business is probably needing to change as well so it's about identifying the uh not only the focus on the profit but also the people and the the planet and when you look at moving towards more sort of feminine traits from a business point of view 
you look at elements so for example competitiveness or competition is very masculine collaboration is feminine so from a marketing point of view rather than not working with your competition or being quite secretive I would open it up to potentially working with uh, other people within your industry or allowing your customers or your clients to contribute to your work as well uh, so and the other thing is also looking at the um, like cyclical growth versus linear growth and how when you're at a marketing level you don't necessarily need to be on all the time um, for a cyclical growth of which is more of a female um, approach you would be doing the selling you'd also be getting the feedback you'd also be creating more ideas and and things like that so it's about looking at the entire way that you are communicating yeah absolutely yeah i mean at the end of the day i know this business terminology because i also you know help companies scale their purpose and profit and i wish that we can write i can wish we could write a new book to how business is supposed to be done because at the end of the day it's all about serving problem solving and human relationships. I kind of just brought it down to those basics over my also experience. And uh, yeah, I mean, the more we get to understand this, the more we're going to uh, start to, I guess, stop experiencing, you know, some of the negative ways that people have done this from uh, the wrong intentions, so to speak, or maybe they didn't know a better way to be able to do it, right? So I think we're going to see a lot more authenticity, even with our content in the age of AI that we're living in. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, beautiful work. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing it today. Thank you. All right. I would love to go to uh, Diane Helbig. Diane, thanks so much for coming on. Where are you based today? Where are you connecting from? I am connecting from Lakewood, Ohio, just outside of Cleveland. Beautiful. I would suggest for everyone, I usually make like a, a list of my network where I put down the locations that they're based out of. And everywhere I travel, I do like local meetups. It's just a suggestion. So I'll put you down for I have a new friend there now too. Great. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Diane, what is it that you do? What are some of the most impactful uh, moments of to the work that you're doing out there in the world? Thanks so much, Elona. Uh, so I do business advising and training. I mainly advise small business owners and train people in all sizes of businesses around sales, leadership, customer service, soft skills sort of stuff. Uh, and I decided to do this um, for a couple of reasons. One, in 2005, my father passed away. That was like my um, pivotal moment where I just thought I need to be doing something else. I had small kids. I wanted to have more flexibility with them. And I wanted to be doing something that had more impact. And I had spent years in small business, many years in small business, watching people do things and struggle in, in a way that I thought was unnecessary. They struggled with sales because they weren't comfortable with it. So I actually watched someone... Uh, not listening to the prospect and basically begging for the work. And all I could think in my head was be quiet, you know, <laughs> like, you know, stop talking because they were pretty much going past the yes. Uh, and, and it drove me nuts. And then leaders who were micromanagers or were conflict avoidant and just all of these things that were getting in the way of their success. And I thought, you know what? I have all of these years of leadership and sales experience. Uh, my father was a big influence on me and he had his own business. We used to talk business a lot. And I just thought I'm, I'm heading out and I'm just going to go do this thing on my own and try and positively impact as many businesses as I can. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I always, I'm a believer of when we know better, we do better. Sometimes, you know, under those levels of awareness, we just think that that's the right thing to do to push, push people through a certain, you know, solution to uh, the way that we maybe believe in and the way that we get to uniquely um, 
be able to serve, but obviously not going beyond boundaries. Yes. Um, so yeah, I could tell, relate to that story as well. And maybe in my beginnings, I've done the same because I was trained that way, right? And uh, looking back now, it's like, oh my gosh, there's absolutely better ways. So what are some of the things you've seen, Diane, in your experience with sales and, and business building, your unique approach or inside the way that you help your clients that so you could share with us? What, what, How can we do this better? Because we all at the end of the day, <laughs> all of us just want to have a great experience selling or creating a solution to the problem that we want to solve for yeah. somebody else so we're all looking for the same thing I just find that sometimes we don't always have the same experience or awareness level or even the skill building part which is something that you know we do through just experience it's not something that you know, learning is great but also we have to practice what we learn so you know how can we do this better stop selling just mm -hmm. <laughs> let it go Th this is this is my uh please do not sell uh you're you do it badly either because you don't like it or because you're doing it the way we were taught in the 80s which doesn't work no one likes it on either side of the table so let's knock it off my viewpoint is um that sales is really about discovery it's about matching a solution to a problem if you can, and the more you are learning about someone else, some other business, what's going on with them, what they need, what their challenges are, what their successes are, all of those things, then if it makes sense, you can match your solution to their situation and it makes sense to both of you. And there's a lot of questions we need to be asking that we're not asking because they're difficult questions and we think the prospect isn't going to answer them. Like we don't take the time um, when you're networking. It's not about you. It's about the other people. So ask people to tell you their story and then be quiet and listen to them. You'll get an opportunity to tell people about you. I promise. Uh, but you know, my, I have like a couple of little rules to follow. And one is, the more you're talking, the less they're listening. So you're sort of wasting your time telling them every little thing about you and your business because they stop paying attention when they thought to themselves, oh, I don't need that. Um, and when you go networking, you're really, you're not looking for clients. You're looking for, to figure out how these people might fit into your orbit, if at all, they might not, but they might be good business friends. They might be, um, a great resource. They might be a good referral partner. You don't know. So that's why we do the discovery and the relationship building and really being curious. So uh, my big thing is back in the um, 80s from Glen Gary, Glenn Ross, it was always be closing. And I have changed that to always be curious. I love that. See, it's a lot of a lot of these things are like pretty much the opposite of what we've learned. <laughs> so obviously, we'll take some time uh, to just become come to our own experience and authentic, organic way, and use our intuition, right? Because we all have it, yeah. um, and uh, we know when it's time to problem solve. We know when it's time to listen. Frankly, the emotional part of human relationships for me is always challenging because I'm more, more on the logical side. So when I learned something, I actually could quote the person, but I forgot where I heard it. They said, listen, just ask, would you like me to problem solve at this moment? Or would you like me to, you know, to uh, to listen? Because a lot of the time, the, even the, the potential client on the other side doesn't even know what is right. the problem they're experiencing, right? For them to come yeah. to the other side of the solution that you might be able to uh to offer and make sure that that's in good alignment and in, and as a great fit for both so yeah absolutely diane what are some of those intentional questions that we can ask to just open up this heart to heart conversation well so one of them is around um i think we have to ask them how they make how they decision make and how they're going to make this decision because it gives us an eye uh, into their process and and what's going on. We have to ask them what their sense of urgency is, what they're hoping to gain. Uh, we have to ask the budget question and we can do it in different ways. We can say, have you ever worked with a company like mine before? If they say yes, they have an idea of a budget. 
If they say no, they might not, but we can ask them, have you considered a budget for this? Let's talk about ranges. What, you know, most people don't want to give you a budget because they're afraid you're going to price to it. There are two questions I think are critical that we have to be asking in every conversation and they go together. And the first one, and it's not the beginning of the conversation, it's further in. And the first question is, what will the impact be for you or your business, depending on who your target is, when you make this, when you make the decision to move forward, whether it's with me or someone else? So it takes you out of the equation, right? You're not talking about working with me. You're just, when you make the decision to do this thing, what will the impact be when? Because it gets them talking out loud and thinking about why this matters so much to them. And then the second question is, what will the impact be if you don't? Because mm. that gets to the pain. Mm. And if there isn't a big impact, if they don't, then they don't need it badly enough to move forward. Mm. Yeah. But if it is, you. Is, you can even then quantify that. So with budget, you can even say, wow, and, and have you quantified that? Do you have an idea of what that looks like just from a, a financial standpoint? Oh yeah, that would be $100,000 a year in lost revenue. Okay, well, then a program that's $10,000, if it could fix that, See where I'm going with this? That's why we got to ask them those questions because they have to feel it. They have to get to that place and they have to share that information with you so you can figure out, is this really a thing? Is this really something that they're all about? I love it, but it's also in service to them because sometimes <laughs> we don't always connect with the bigger vision of why we want what we want and why is it urgent because our monkey brain is going into the fear um and yeah. the risk perception right so and yeah. we and we and people are going to say this is why i want something but we have to help them get to the so what like okay you want to make this money so what what's it going to do for you why what you know once again the sign it's like what is this why right because that's really the reason why they're going to what why they are exploring whatever it is you offer all right. Well, that was a million dollar <laughs> advice right there. All these amazing nuggets. Thank you so much, Diane, for what you Thank just you. I'll come back to you at the end as well. All right. I'd love to go to Jody next. Jody Flourish. Did I get that right? My last name's Floristenfeld, but um, my business is Flourish. So, um, but similarly hard to pronounce. It looks crazy so rather than have the 13 letters i just put my business name <laughs> i love it flourish so tell us about what flourish is and where are you actually based before you we get into that well i am usually based in new york city but i'm coming to you all from florida today um celebrating uh passover with my family down south oh beautiful um enjoy florida how's the weather there it's beautiful. Um, it's really nice and sunny. And I want to say it's hot. It's like 86, but I'll take it after a wow. damp spring mm -hmm. in, in New York. Take me with you. I'm living vicariously through you. Uh, we're not, we're getting a cold weather here again in New York. We had like a couple of sunshine days, kind of just kind of giving us a peek of that. But then, yeah, it's a little chillier. So we got to still keep our jackets on. So um, beautiful. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And what's behind Flourish? What's the mission behind Flourish? What What is the, it that you do there? The mission behind Flourish um, kind of is like the life school. We're all always growing, learning, evolving, flourishing um, every single day. And my why was my daughter's birth. She was born 12 weeks early, premature. And I came to realize during the preemie parent journey when my, hus when my husband and I were in the NICU with our daughter for 77 days that we just felt so alone and lost and confused as to what our parenthood journey was going to look like and how our parenthood journey was going to be different than those of people that have full-term babies. And the problem is, is that as parents, we're all just grouped together <laughs> as parents. When our child is the patient, that is very true. 
but the parents are the ones that are caring for the baby once the baby comes home. And what is it that parents will need in their toolbox to help them reframe what they thought parenthood was going to look like to what it actually does look like, especially in those first couple of years when your child is getting caught up and also how to deal with the fact that, okay, the milk has spilled and my path, which was here, is now here. How do I get back to here? So I help people reframe their mindset to help them get back to here and also help them set their child up for success later on down the road, whatever success means to them. Mm, oh, wow. I mean, uh, that's that's absolutely a mission stemming from your life experience as well, uh, just like the life school here. But uh, yeah, I think it's so, so important to, to have that support, especially during that time. I remember years ago now, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a vulnerable time for both parents. So the fact that you're doing this work and you're supporting in this way is absolutely amazing. So what are some of the things that you can you do in your process of helping support parents through the, the transition um, that you spoke about that you can share with us? What are some of the things that you've seen and what is your unique methodology to helping them tackle those things? Well, I first, I think my unique methodology is that I've kind of been in all of these parents' shoes whether it is someone who is currently in the NICU or out of the NICU a few years, while the complications and challenges might be different, the main themes are always very similar. And talking to someone who has gone through it and can fully validate and empathize with everything you were going through and all of those feelings of loneliness, guilt, sadness, um, confusion really helps when it comes from a peer perspective as opposed to a medical perspective. When you're meeting the person where they are as opposed to looking down at them and trying to help them from that point of view. But in my work, I have found that it's really important for parents to be, first of all, very self-aware and to want to do the work on themselves and realize that it's not a quick fix. And I share that with all the parents that I work with, um, because like everyone has said so far, is that um, transformation, no matter what it is, takes time. And you have to be willing to do the work. And in doing that, I help parents really find out what their triggers are and how to handle those triggers and come up with a positive framework for handling them going forward. Sometimes some of those triggers could be very easily, you know, predicted based upon life events or certain events going on in life. But you could also be walking down the street and be triggered just the same. And how do you handle those situations when you don't have the time to prepare? I also help parents kind of compartmentalize their emotions and their energy so that they channel all this positive energy into their child's growth and development and helping them give them all the tools, therapists, resources, energy that will help their babies grow, thrive, and develop and become the president of the United States if they want to one day. And that really starts from the parents, because if the parents don't feel good, right, they're exuding this negative energy that their child is going to feed off. And in doing all this positive work, once you see your child doing well and growing and flourishing, then you too feel so much better as well. Mm. Absolutely. I love that you mentioned the fact, just like we talk about leadership, you know, in business, right? Because you're the main decision maker. When you're uh, not taking care of yourself or even, you know, a parent in everyday life, then obviously you get to transfer a lot of that onto your baby and your children and all of that. Because I always say our kids are our tiny audiences that are always watching. 
Um, and especially, you know, when you go through such a stage and transition and have somebody guide you through a lot of those different things that it feels like chaos, right? You don't know what's happening and whether it's an emotion, whether it's like a problem solving, like something that you need to, to do to time manage better or, you know, get a routine going, all those challenges that usually happen uh, at that stage and adding, you know, preemie to, to the mix absolutely makes it a lot more challenging. So amazing work that you're doing out there in the world, Jody, and thank you so much for sharing. Thanks so much for having me, Elena. Absolutely. Well, we're actually gone down to three of our last speakers here for our event today. Amazing wisdom. Thank you so much, everybody, for what you just shared. And I always learn and grow through each experience because everybody brings so much wisdom to the table and so much life experience, right? Whether it's personal or professional. I always value that in other people uh, because that's how we learn as humans, right? From one another. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I would love to go to my next speaker for the day, Jeff. Jeff, I'm not going to attempt your last name. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I would butcher it. So um, you, you can call me. Life. You can call me Jeff G. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's easy. Perfect. <laughs> abbreviation words. Where are you? Uh, well, you said New Zealand, right? You're connected. Yeah. So, yeah I, listen, I'm, first I want to say what a great group and a great conversation. I'm just loving this. Uh, and thanks for inviting me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, my name is Jeff Gamagami. I'm based in Auckland, New Zealand. I actually grew up in the United States and in, in the uh, Northeast uh, in Pennsylvania. But I, I've been here in New Zealand for 40 years. So, <laughs> oh, uh, I love it. So you are, uh, you are on Wednesday today, right? Um, that's so, right. I'm, I'm, I'm in yeah. your future. <laughs> I got up, at, I got up at four a.m. to be here. I was, you know, to so. Oh my I'll goodness! My well, talk about commitment to your mission. Four a.m. and you're here, uh, sharing your message with us. Very, very grateful. Thank you so much for being here. And tell us a little bit about, around the the impactful work that you're doing as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen. Um. I've I've been in the health and wellness world for about the last 32 years. Um, my wife and I built a business that, um, well, actually, my father passed away of a heart attack. He was a surgeon in the U.S. Uh, he, he died of a heart attack at age 54. And that sort of moved me down this mission, my, my curiosity around health and wellness and prevention. Uh, uh, we managed to partner with a company, a U.S.-based company, and helped to bring their product line here into the Pacific region and, and into Southeast Asia. Um, we've been very, very grateful, very fortunate. We've built a business that turned over hundreds of millions of dollars. And uh, my wife likes to say we do workshops. I do the work and she shops. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm very, very, very grateful. She shops for houses, not handbags. And so she invested well. And uh, we retired. We've been retired for the past uh, 10 or so years. And um, then about, uh, gosh, uh, almost a year ago, the brand that we had been when distributing through here in the Pacific region called me and said, listen, we'd like to know if you'd be willing to come out of retirement and work on this new project um, called Project Helix. And I'm like, okay, not really. I'm kind of enjoying life, um, but I was curious. And so I uh, we went up to the US and I got to tell you, my mind was blown. And so it's um, we're, we're basically working, I, I guess, um, in the health and wellness world, we can, we're, we're born at 100% the day we're born. You know, you, we get our genes, our genetics from our parents and our grandparents and our great grandparents. Uh, and then every day after that, we're slowly sort of every breath we take gives us life and every breath we take sort of, you know, helps to break down our our uh, our environment. And uh, most people um, end up dimming out and, you know, we're all about popping out. How could you how, how could you live life full on and pop out instead of dim out? So that's a bit of the project um, uh, right now the the company NSC the brand I'm working alongside they are investing 1.2 billion US dollars in developing an app powered by AI uh, this has been a, a project they've been working on for about five years um, they have about 800 engineers and about 100 scientists working on the project right now essentially uh, they are going to uh, develop this app it's free if you've know, heard of Noom or my fitness pal that kind of gives you kind of a little bit of a general idea the company tried to acquire Noom as a, as a kind of a anchor point. Uh, you'll be able to order a DNA assessment, a microbiome assessment. I love what uh, Andrea is doing. Uh, you'll be able to connect your wearable. This isn't a wearable, but you know, a wearable tech, a uh, Fitbit or an Apple Watch, or maybe a Garmin or a, or a ring, or maybe the new Galaxy ring coming out to measure your, your steps and your sleep and your stress 
uh, your heart rate. Uh, soon they're talking about blood sugar, which would be a game changer, I think, for biometrics. Uh, they have a, a, a assessments around mental wellness, um, you know, everything from uh, anxiety and stress uh, right through to your cognitive function and, uh, and then physical health. Uh, and then they've got a kind of a cool piece of tech that they've developed. And we've just released this, um, which it's, we call, we nicknamed it the fat zapper because uh, everyone wants to, you know, zap fat. But literally what it does is it has little sensors that can measure inside your body up to 300 different biomarkers um, from your uh -huh. circulatory system and lymphatic system through to your visceral and subcutaneous fats and, you know, muscle mass, et cetera. Essentially what Project Helix is about is creating a digital twin Okay, here is you today. And what could you be optimized? If we optimized every single element in your in your life, how can we pop out instead of dim out? And um, and then create a protocol around uh, what foods to eat, what you know, what foods to avoid. Um, perhaps um, uh, the exercise program best suited to your body type, uh, using gamification and drip learning, helping to sort of modify people's you know daily behavior a little bit to a more positive environment, all app-based. Uh, and then we'll be able to create personalized nutrition, looking at people's deficiencies. Um, a friend of mine uh, likes to make things simple. He said, well, if you think about Ancestry.com, you know, great company, they kind of look at your past, you know, you know where, where, did your, where did your lineage come from? Uh, what if we could peek into the future with Project Helix and see what obstacles may be in your future? And then using epigenetic science, how can we create protocols and even formulas of natural plant-based ingredients to maybe sidestep or prevent those uh, those potential issues happening in the future. So how, how can we empower people um, to live their best life as a, you know, and, and ultimately, like I said, pop out instead of dim out. I love that. Well, that's the perfect definition of using technology for good, right? Because you know, there, there's also other other side effects that can happen with that. I love the mission behind that. And your wife is a very smart shopper. So I'd love to ask you, Jeff. <laughs> she resonates with lots of the uh, the things that my husband says also. But um, I think at the end of the day, especially based on your amazing experience that you have growing successful businesses, what are some of the lessons that you've learned, some of the most impactful lessons that you've learned as an entrepreneur that you could share with somebody that wherever they are in the journey of growing a successful company that is aligned, it's a healthy company, has a great culture, is very lean on purpose and profit, pretty much at the end of the day, that's what most companies want. What are some of those impactful lessons that you have learned um, that you could share with us? Well, listen, there's, there's, there's probably, we can spot, talk for hours about this. Um, I think the most, what, what occurred to me when you asked that question is really that the people are the most valuable asset in any organization. And so if you focus on your people, uh, on your team, um, you're really going to uh, see potential to, to, to help scale your business. If you really empower them to have and feel um, that they're winning, you're gonna win. And I loved what um, what Diane, I believe it was Diane who was sharing, uh, really, about, really about stop selling uh, and start being, I, I like to say, be interested in people and they'll be interested in you. Um, you know, and I think that's a really, you know, there's just been some great nuggets here um, that everyone has spoken about. I think the last thing is understand that there's resistance. You know, whenever you've got it, the, the bigger uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the mission you have, the more resistance you're going to have. And so be prepared for resistance. Um, when you're getting lots of resistance, I like to think you're on the right track. Um, and we want to have ease and flow. Uh, again, I, I like what uh, I think it was Hepsi talked about. Um, with uh, positive and, and uh, you know, mas masculine and feminine energies. Um, so I, I think really, you know, working with collaboration, there's nothing wrong with a bit of, you know, let's set a goal and let's go for it, guys. But, you know, working with collaboration and in a win-win environment, I think mm -hmm. also is really important in, in, organ in an organization. The customers have to win uh, before you win. Put, you know, I, I like to say, make your, you know, call yourself number two and put your customers first uh, in your organization. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing wisdom. And yeah, it takes a, a team to, to build a dream for sure. And even though obviously technology is here as well, there's still the human resource is the most important uh, part that we have as in our companies and in our businesses. I love that you mentioned the resistance piece, actually. That attracted me based on kind of what you shared. So the bigger the mission, the bigger the vision, the bigger 
the thing that you want to build, the more resistance you will feel. What are some of those things that most people might experience as resistance? Because sometimes we don't know how to translate this and maybe people quit or they stay small or they kind of just have some of the mindset barriers of fear that might hold them back from really pulling the mission out there and creating impact and really building a successful company. What are some of the, the things that you've seen as far as resistance that you've also experienced? Well, you know, listen, I think you said it right there in mindset. Um, the world, <laughs> the environment and the world out there is the same for everybody. It's our relationship to it. Uh, it's our perspective. Usually what, what defeats most people in business uh, and in life and in relationships, because I think the way we do one thing in life is the way we do everything in life. Um, that's been my experience. Uh, we don't uh, we don't have a separate way we do business and a separate way we do life and a separate way we parent or a separate way we exercise, look after our health. The way we do one thing is the way we do everything. Um, I think it's really getting that little, you know, six or seven inches uh, or so between our ears um, and help uh, really to work on that. If we work more on ourselves um, than our businesses, um, I think you'll see all sorts of miracles begin to happen. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, we get all of these. I, I mean, I had to ask myself coming out of retirement, uh, where we're living a pretty good life. We've traveled from Antarctica to river cruises to from Budapest to Amsterdam to you know we've done all sorts of uh, fun adventures this map my, my wife bought me this map <laughs> behind us I thought oh what a nice thing to buy uh actually comes from Ukraine um and she's putting we're putting all the little map the little uh, uh whatever um uh, yeah. flags into the countries we've been to and then I realized I said look at all the places we've been and uh, when I realized that she says, look at all the places we haven't been. The yin to your yang, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but I think it, my point really is, is, is that, you know, um, work on yourself uh, and all of a sudden, um, I, what is the word? Be, you know, be easy on yourself and life will be easy, will be hard on you. Be hard on yourself, um, you know, and life will be easy on you. And for myself, I had to think, if I wanted to build a multi-billion dollar business, who do I have to be, right? It's not how am I going to do sales or how am I going to find the right team or who do I have to be um, as a person, as a, as a husband, as a father, as a, uh, you know, as a leader, um, mm -hmm. as, as a friend, who do I have to be um, to be able to attract that and have that right, um, right, I guess, thinking in my mind. So thanks for asking though. I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing. I think it goes to back to one of our values here, growth and contribution, right? Because the more we focus on, per, on our per, own personal growth, the more we get to create an impact with our businesses and the people Absolutely. that are around us. So Absolutely. thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you so much for sharing the mission and vision behind uh, Project Helix there. Thank you. All right. I would love to go to Kathy Dirksen next. Uh, Kathy, thank you so much for coming on. Same Hello. question for you. Where are you based? And if you could share some of the most meaningful moments that are leading you to inspire tenacity. All right. I am located near Vancouver, Canada. So on the West Coast of Canada. It is wonderful to be here. I'm really enjoying all these conversations as well. Uh, the big thing that I do with my company, I, I left the corporate world about three years ago, knowing that I, I had a feeling that I was here to truly create impact in the lives of especially women around the world. And in my job that I had before, I really felt contained and squashed and not able to really do it my way. So, so really the big picture of what I do now, and as you mentioned, my company is called Inspired Tenacity. And my big focus is really especially on midlife women. I find so many of us are feeling kind of stuck in not knowing what are we supposed to be doing with the next 30 years of our life, you know, the instructions we were given as a child were took us through finishing school, going to university, getting married, having kids, to have a career, and then retire. Well, what is that? You know, this idea of, oh, we're just going to putter. Well, that was fine when we would only live to 65 or 70, but we've got a plan to live into our 90s. And to me, our 50s, 60s, 70s can be our most productive years. And it can be when we can actually do what excites and inspires us. So my big thing is to really help women to see that we're just starting the next chapter. We're just getting going. And let's not sit back and 
I find often our immediate family and friends are usually the ones that tell us to calm down, settle down. Oh, why would you start something new? Oh, just enjoy where you're at. And whereas really <laughs> surrounding ourselves with a community like this of people who are thinking big, doing big, always looking for that growth edge, this is where we all need to be. And so that's really the big focus of my work. And Inspired Tenacity came about as uh, I feel that those are a couple of the key ingredients for making any big changes in life. We need that inspiration of this is what I'm going to do now. But then we need that tenacity to just keep at it till we get there. And so that's the big picture of my mission. Yeah. How the main things that I do right now in towards that is I create anthology projects. So I bring women from around the world together to share their journey, share their experience, share what they've learned along the way in books with that goal that I think, especially women, I think we learn from each other's stories in a lot of ways. And the more we see examples of women who are doing big things and have come through big challenges, I feel that that really helps to give women those ideas that, hey, I can do big things too. I can do something completely different that I've never done before. And, you know, using myself as, as an example, and Jeff, I love what all your things you're doing. My original career was in medical genetics. So the whole thing with our genomes and wow. epigenetics and all that fun stuff is right up my alley. But I left that about 12 years ago when I started on this path of what am I here for that's really my thing. And at that point, I went into financial planning thinking, well, that's an area that a lot of women could use support. but And that's where I really felt completely controlled and confined by the limitations of that industry. And so after a decade in that, again, I thought, okay, this is not right. This is not where I'm supposed to be. And I completely changed again to what I'm doing now. And so I think the more we see examples of women who are really looking at the bigger picture of what is it I'm here for, what excites and inspires me, Seeing those examples, I think, does inspire and give permission for others to do the same. Yeah, I love this, Kathy. Um, it's okay not to know what you want to do when you grow up. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I think that's the measure of reinvention and evolution. And, you know, um, pretty much what I've also noticed in my experience is that everything's been a trampoline, right? You've learned something from all the past experiences that you've gone through. And the more you stay open to new possibilities or pay attention to what lights you up and start new things, the more you start to see how everything connects. And with age, you just become more valuable because now you have so much more experience to bring to the table, whether it's your own personal life, You've obviously hashed a lot of things that held you back from staying small and reworking some of those things that no longer serve you. So you have a better sense of who you actually are and your purpose and, you know, what am I here to do and all of that, even though that sounds like a big purpose, we can have a, you know, a, a clear purpose around a certain stage and phase of life as well. We don't need to know the entire thing. So helping people the way that you're doing or women that are, you know, in the midlife, um, I guess, life transition phase and stage. It's absolutely amazing because uh, I say the same. I'm like, I always want to be a, a life student. I never want to know what's on the other side. And then when you learn something, it's time to get to learn something new. And that's how we keep ourselves also looking young, our brain fresh, our spirits high, because there's always something new to look forward to. It's like bringing in that inner child is amazing. What are some of the fundamentals that you use in your work to help women go from sort of where they are? And I know obviously they're individually in different paths and journeys, but I'm sure you've seen some commonalities um, between the women you know, that you get to support. What are some of those pillars that you use to help them bridge that gap between where you are feeling maybe like they can reinvent themselves or they don't know what else to do into figuring out, okay, this is something that lights me up and I will pay attention to that and grab that and hold on to that. Exactly. And one of the parts of my work with the books is that I do work individually with each one of the authors to help them clarify what that story is that they're sharing. 
And, and I find in doing that and really helping them kind of go back and think through, you know, what were the things I went through in my life? What were those turning points and the lessons that I learned along the way? And, and I find for a lot of women that that really becomes something that almost shifts their own understanding of themselves. And it, it's amazing how participating in these book projects really becomes almost a therapeutic thing for a lot of people because they really are looking at their life and what they've come through and accomplished in a whole different way. So to me, I find that that's one of the things that really starts that shift. And then the other part is really that working in community with these projects. So all of my projects generally have 20 to 25 women from around the world. So they're coming from all different perspectives, but focused on the theme of the book. And I find that as they get to know each other and hear and see each other's stories, it does also then add to that shift around, wow, she did that. I could probably do that too. And, and really, like I said, really starts bringing in that permission to try something new, that permission to step into new communities. And so to me, those are a few of the things that really get women on that, that, that shift in their life and, and taking on that confidence even to know that, hey, I can do these other big things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, surround yourself. They always say, right, you're the average of the five people. So find communities where these conversations are just the norm, right? People are interested in growing, developing, um, and, you know, figuring out what's the next step for them. And yeah, something will hit you, right? And you, a new seed will plant. And I always say something that is attractive to you, somehow it's connected to, to your path and your purpose. So just pay attention to that. And yes. you don't have to know how, right? Because the tyranny of the, of the how sometimes uh, holds us back, but just stay curious and trust that that's something inside of you willing, you know, waiting to come out and pursue it because it's it speaks to you. There's a reason why you're attracted to that and I might be not because I have a different, uh, different uh, path uh, to follow. So uh, beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Kathy, for also the work that you're doing out there um, with all these amazing women um, that are feeling empowered to be able to follow their purpose. To me, that's kind of what it is. Follow their purpose, unique path, aligned with the right you know, path um, so they can um, be useful to themselves, you know, work on, on their, their life. And also that's automatically the byproduct will be that you will be impacting others, right? Because yes. you don't can do as much as obviously we have inside of us so um awesome well i don't want this to end but the last but our, our last but last but not least um least but not last <laughs> it's like confused that the last thing uh is renee v so renee thank you so much for coming on and patiently waiting thank um, you so well, i did so funny because just now my son was like interrupting me i'm like i'm just about to talk you know <laughs> right now <laughs> <laughs> life happens like mommy's got to share her mission right as we oh, entrepreneurs, as we become entrepreneurs as we entrepreneurs um so a day in the life of for sure so where is it that you are actually based on i'm outside of philadelphia so uh who said it was it jeff said he was from pennsylvania so yes and but i did live in new york for 15 years so i feel connected to a, a couple of you here um yeah, so I, I lived in New York for 15 years and then moved back here to Pennsylvania, where I'm from, um, in 2015. So, and ha happy, happy, happy. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I mean, every every place is a new experience. That's why I also love to travel, Jeff. And I have, like, my, mm -hmm. you know, bucket list, uh, all the places that I like to travel to, because it, it's just that culture that you feel the vibe of a new country, people, all of that, just adds value to you and then it becomes part of your story right that you can organically share and connect with the people that actually physically have a correlation or a connection to the place so mm -hmm. it just you know it, it just adds to the overall human experience for sure um can you share with us a few of the most meaningful moments around the work that you do as well sure so um by trade i'm a speech pathologist i've been in that field for over 22 years um but a couple years ago i kind of went through a you know, um, personal development journey. And um, what I love listening to all of you here was there's like this golden thread that's going right through all of us. And it's all about belief and um, raising our awareness to what's possible for us. And for, and while we're doing that, 
you know, helping others do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, I love, like, I, I geek out on these kind of rooms. I'm like, yes, I love this. Um, <laughs> so my, uh, I ended up, uh, resigning from my full-time job at a, as a speech therapist in public schools to start a business called Mighty Minds Academy, where we, Actually, I, my big statement is that I believe everyone needs life school because, um, you know, there's a large, large gap between what our, our youth is learning in school, their formal education, and actually what life, um, the skills they need to function in life. <laughs> and yeah. it's scary, so to, you know, it's scary to me that um, this movement that I am now on had, had didn't start years and years and years ago. Um, but I understand why it's because, um, like some of you mentioned, um, you know, about the expectation, right? You go to school, you go to college, you get out, you get married, you know, and I did all those things. Like I, I'm a, I am a very like accomplished human, right? But there's a piece of me that was not enjoying just working with speech kids, you know, my language, little kids, I love them to death, but it's, you know, I felt like very limited. Um, in, in how I can help them. So, you know, in learning what I was learning through my personal development program that I invested in, I, my whole, my whole life changed and it really, you know, I always kind of was wondering what my purpose is, you know, like we we're put here for a reason. And for a long time, I thought it was to be a mom and a wife and, you know, uh, have the white picket fence and be a speech therapist till I'm 70. And that's what I thought because I didn't really feel called to anything else. And that's, that also scared me because <laughs> I, I knew I was meant for more. I always felt like I was meant for more. And what I realized was that I, I was an unconscious competent and I was practicing a lot of the stuff that I was learning about, um, but didn't really understand what I was learning, what, what I, how I was implementing it, if that makes sense. Like it wasn't something that was known. I didn't learn it in school. It wasn't something that I, I had heard about, you know, the subconscious mind and, um, how we have actual power over our thoughts. So it just, it sparked this like need in me to, to bring the, that information into bite-sized pieces for our teenagers and even younger than teenagers and their parents. Why? Because if we aren't learning it and our kids are learning it, we're not going to speak the same language. So it's really important for those who are interested in learning more about themselves and raising <clears throat> their awareness and even understanding how their mind works, that we are doing it with our kids because we want our families to be cohesive and successful together. And the only way we're doing that is if we're doing it together. So um, a huge part of my mission is to bring, you know, bridge the gap between what our kids are learning in schools and real useful life skills, right? We're not, we're not going to move the mountain of public education yet. It's coming because technology, the way things are evolving, school's not keeping up with it. And that is why we're seeing a huge, huge increase in kids with anxiety, kids with depression. They they lack direction. They want to take their own lives, which blows my mind because, you know, we were put here to be happy and 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 to create. So when I hear about, you know, the youth, especially, I mean, forget adults too, but the youth, especially going through these tragic and horrible things, I know there's an answer to it and it's not medicating them. And it's not, it's not putting them in some kind of institution. Most of the times, I mean, there are exceptions, <laughs> but you know, overall, what they're struggling with is identity. They don't love themselves. And where does that come from? It comes from out generations above us passing all those programs down to us. And the fact that we can control this and that we are able to make our own decisions on what we believe in and what we think is what I, my mission is to let kids know mm. that someone else's opinion of them does not have to become the reality. Yeah. Well, powerful mission. My God, it's like, that's the future, right? Youth is the future. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think I'm also a very disappointed parent from, yeah. I have two kids, uh, middle and, and high school. And I'm sometimes I don't verbalize it because obviously I want them to still do well and push themselves sure. and do the right things. But I'm very disappointed with what they're learning. And sometimes it feels like we have to take some of those life skills into our own hands as parents now 
um, so that we can equip our kids with some of the things that maybe, you know, they're not receiving from traditional school. So Renee, based on the work that you do on the day to day and your own experience and learnings with your own kids and uh, <clears throat> also the knowledge that you've gained over the years, I'm sure as you know, I know one thing for sure, once we get passionate about something, we just, there's never enough information. We start go, going deep into things. So based on your learning and knowledge, um, let's talk to parents. So if, you know, we have parents listening today that have a kid in those middle school, you know, teenage years, and they're experiencing some of those things that you talked about, what are some of the things that we could start doing or implementing? And what are some of those gaps that we can start filling that they might not be getting from the traditional school system based on what you could share with us? How much time do you guys have? <laughs> <laughs> as much as your heart uh, desires, whatever's coming through, just let it out. Because there's about 20 topics that our kids need to be learning that they're not. And that's just the beginning. <laughs> Let's start with that. I, I think that's very, very insightful because I've also questioned that. I'm like, what are some of the topics that we can focus them oh, in our, boy. that will serve them for You're the You're opening the lid. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think what's really important is to start um, just having our kids understand how their mind works. I went through school, I, I studied the brain, I'm a speech therapist, we had to study the brain. I was never taught the concept of how our mind, what our mind is and how we learn. I mean, it's it's common, you know, for every human, this is what happens. So why is it not common knowledge, right? So so I, st I pretty much start with just learn, understand, having kids understand what, you know, the power of yet, that their minds, their mindset matters. It literally controls everything in our world, right? From inside to out. So self-love is a huge, huge um, struggle for kids. They're not, they don't love themselves. Or, and, and, and I think we're all guilty of it too, really, is not knowing that being your own best friend makes you a winner. It doesn't make you selfish. It makes you a winner because if you don't have the love within, you can't pour it out. So, um, being, stop being our own worst hypocrites and beating ourselves up over silly things is really important because I think just generally, generationally, you know, and I, it's so interesting to me that, you know, even myself growing up, um, you know, I, I love it. I exercise all the time. Right. And it's like, it, it was a, it was frowned upon once I had kids like, oh, you're going, you're going to leave them with a sitter to go to the gym. Yes, I am. <laughs> actually, you know, but it, it, you get that like, guilt, like a guilt that you're taking care of yourself. And it's not for vanity's sake, as much as it is for health and being a good role model for my kids and having them see that I get up and I might not feel like it, but I'm going to go do something good for my, my mind or my spirit or my body. And every day, and I now see, I reap the benefits of it. My kids are, they, they are watching. So I think you said it, Ilona, they, they have, um, they kind of have a front row seat to our, our parenting movie with popcorn. They're sitting there watching, right? Watch, 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 watch. They're not listening to us. They're watching us. So, um, so I also talk a lot about, you know, just the power of thought, the importance of setting goals. I have lessons on confidence, self-image, which is huge. Um, de decision-making, uh, let me think about fear fear of, you know, getting out of your comfort zone, uh, what else? the law of attraction. I have a big one on that, which is one of my favorites because it's, you know, everyone thinks it's woo woo, but it's actually a law. And I, it makes me nuts when people don't understand that, that it's like just as real as gravity is, um, be showing gratitude at being grateful is a huge lesson that I teach as well as it's called, I call it emotionomics. It's your emotional IQ, your IQ of your feelings. So I know a lot of you on here um, would appreciate that to learn that younger than we did. And we are still working on probably uh, the power of real uh, visualization and mindfulness. I mean, I could keep going. I There's just so much beautiful information that our children, as well as us would benefit from, you know, just diving into and understanding understanding our power. And I think that's important for my, you know, my own children too, is understanding that they are in charge. You know, I'm here to guide, but you are in charge of your life. 
and I'm going to be, you know, try my best to support you in every way I can, but I'm not going to helicopter over you. I need you to be an independent human that is functioning because I'm excited to retire and go travel. You know, I, 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 I feel like a lot of us parents, I'm not generalizing with you, you guys, but, you know, kind of don't let our kids problem solve. We don't let our kids um, you know, deal with situations that might not be pleasant. It's a part of life. Death is a part of life. We have to understand how to grieve. We have to understand that, that their tragedy can strike at any minute and it's, it's going to suck, but how are we getting out of that? How are we functioning through trauma, death, um, you know, losing a job, whatever it is, grieving, whatever it is you're grieving, how are when we're the, when we're riding that like low wave, how do we get back up and ride the waves, you know, and don't drown. So I could go on for hours with you because I know you guys all get it and I don't even need to really explain it, but it, it the importance of it is really what I'm trying to voice out there in the world. And it's, you know, it's, it takes a village and, and it takes a movement and it needs to be more than just me doing it. And, um, you know, I've been working together with a lot of people that are kind of on the same mission and uh, that helps because you don't feel like a little island, you know, where you are, you, you actually have people who understand, like you all understand it. Um, so that's, it's refreshing when you don't have to explain it. So, so in depth that people are, you know, needing to raise their own awareness, you guys are aware of it. Um, but I'm here to represent the younger crew and, of helping the younger crew because every single topic you all brought up, our kids have the same issues and we can nip it in the bud or give them the strategies or give them the skills way earlier than we all learn them. And wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah, Renee, I wrote them all down. Okay. <laughs> You just need someone to list the stuff out. That's why I'm so, I mean, everything happens for a good reason. I'll send you a list. We get, we get so bomb, bombarded by all this information. And I've been, I mean, I haven't, I don't know. I've been having this awareness myself around, okay, maybe I should just write down certain topics that help me personally develop that I wish now I can transfer over to my kids. So you did it. And I'm <laughs> sure uh, we'll find out a little bit more towards the end. Who we actually are at the end of the event. Where is it that people can further continue this conversation? Sure. I think and, we'll uh, love it. we will all further connect. Absolutely. For sure. But I think one important one that you talked about is critical thinking, uh, creativity and decision making. Mm -hmm. Those three things are absolutely what's going to be needed in the future as well. And I, I'm not sure that all our kids are prepared for that, but yeah, I know they're not. It's, it's actually, it's actually, it's actually <laughs> I know they're not. To, mm -hmm, uh, to be able to have that awareness because we are we go first, right? We're the parents. So, all right. Well, thank you so much, Renee. Thank you so much, everybody. I'd like to wrap up today's event with uh, kind of a final insight for each from each one of you. Um, I guess the authentic insight that you've had from your own personal development journey, the the one most important one that you'd like to share with our audience today, and also where is it that uh, we can further continue this conversation with all of you? So I'll go back to Eileen, and just be careful, be aware, you're all muted, so mm -hmm. unmute yourself. Okay. I'm, I'm Thank you. Yes. Uh, well, uh, people, I, I would like to continue this conversation. Uh, by meeting with people um, uh, at uh, and the the on Zoom and the URL is uh, bitly b i t period l y forward slash realigning with emotions. Um, I just uh, Alona, I want to appreciate you for assembling this particular group of people. I I don't think I felt so stimulated and excited and uh, confirmed. And I will, uh, I'm not confessing, but I will tell you that I am now 81 years old. And so much of what each of you has talked about. The, uh, my husband died eight years ago. My son came to me and said, how old are you? How much money do you have? How do you want to spend it? What do you want the rest of your life to be like? Do you want to keep paying taxes on this house or would you like to do something else? And I said something else. So I cleaned out the house, sold it, bought the van, 
and took off. And as I started, I was given a breast cancer diagnosis as well. And I worked with that for a year. Uh, alternatively, it didn't grow in the year, but it didn't disappear. And so I had it removed. Uh, but when I quit, I, I gave up my private practice that I'd had my 13 year uh, radio program podcast and got in the van and took off. And then COVID happened and people started showing up uh, saying, can we have a checkup? And so now I do, um, I do one day a week of working with people. I have written a book called Emotions in Motion, Mastering Life's uh, Built-in Navigation System. And I'm now an Amazon best-selling author as well. And um, I, when we talk about uh, what are you doing with your life, uh, uh, Jeff, I, I mean, I've resonated with so much of what each of you has said. I can't go into it, but I perceived myself to be standing on third base in a baseball game. And my mission was to run into home. And there are two ways you can go into home, on your face or standing up. And I decided to go in standing up. So my what I've learned, Ilona, and I just really want to appreciate you for bringing this group of people together. You guys are amazing. And I say that from my many years of experience and wisdom. <laughs> and I'm kidding you. Um, is that uh, we have it wrong. We have been taught to live our lives from the outside in. If I say I want more love in my life, I go try to find somebody to love me. And as you have all either alluded to or spoken about, that's not the way to live life. We need to live from the inside out. First, I love myself. I love myself completely. I fill myself up with love. Then I have extra love to give over to other people. And because the world is a mirror, the people that show up, show up in my life love me back. And I have had, when my husband left me years ago, um, I um, was alone to parent this child. And I created, I made lemonade out of lemons. I created something at the time I called conscious parenting, a whole system of parenting that involves many of the things you guys are talking about, uh, of seeing uh, uh, this as a spiritual journey and uh, parents are learners and teachers and kids are learners and teachers. And we are mutually helping each other. And a lot of the things that we're addressing in life is, is learning from our children. Uh, when children become uh, um, frenetic as teenagers, my experience is that's because their parents haven't grown enough yet and the child is frantic that they're going to be leaving soon and the parent hasn't grown. So they start doing things and the parent has to look at what the hell's going on in their lives. Anyway, very exciting. Sorry to take up so much space, but I'm so excited about all of you and just wanted to share. Uh, I think you're so super on the, on the tracks that I too have discovered during this 81 years I've been around. Thank you so much, Eileen, for all the amazing lessons that your heart wanted to, to share with us today. Beautiful, beautiful work. And we'll, uh, I will make sure that all the links are also included inside the event so everybody can easily find each other, connect, because I believe that this is just the beginning of just bringing amazing people together and starting amazing conversations and collaborations. So thank you so much for sharing. I'd love to go to Duncan next. Same thing for you, Duncan. One insightful lesson from your own authentic personal development development experience, and also I'm where to follow that. You, you expect me to, to say something that makes sense after all of that wisdom? I mean, thank. <laughs> no, look, I, I completely agree with Eileen. She's bang on. You know, so much of our society is geared towards adding stuff. You know, you're stressed. Well, have a glass of wine. That will relax you. But the truth is you don't need to keep adding stuff. Some of the time you need to take stuff away. And I think, it, you know, it all starts from within. I, the one message I would love everybody to actually appreciate is that you are enough. 
You know, you are enough. You have absolutely everything inside you that you need to live a wonderful, happy, fulfilling life. You don't need alcohol. You don't need a lot of things, but you particularly don't need alcohol. And that really, that message is at the heart of my first book, which is called Get Over Indulgence. And I'd love to share that with your listeners. They can grab a free copy of it at getover.uk. That's getover.uk. That'll take you to a bit of my website. You can download the PDF. You can download the Kindle version. If you can stand to listen to me for three hours and 45 minutes, you can download the audio book as well. And I, I will apologize now for the silly voices, uh, but it is an important message. And, you know, it's something that I don't think I'll ever get tired of saying. You, you are enough. And if you don't believe me, just put getover.uk into the uh, internet and uh, I'll attempt to prove it to you in about 120 pages. Thank you so much. All right, Andra next. Alana, first, I just wanted to thank you for having me. This was just such an amazing discussion. I loved what everybody had to say. And it seems like we're all on the same mission, just different pieces of that puzzle, because we're all saying a lot of the same thing here. And I guess that's my message too, to, to look in, stop looking out. You are enough. And you really can achieve anything you want in this life. We're meant to be happy. Um, Renee said it beautifully. You know, we're creators. We're we're meant to have wonderful lives. And, and so many people spend their life chasing it instead of living it. So live your life. Show up. And that's it. Um, I'm at poundstogo.com. Um, my books are also listed there, too, I believe. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Pepsi? Hi, um, my kind of one big personal learning is to ask the question, why? Especially when I'm working with successful uh, female leaders and they don't feel aligned and they feel stressed and burned out, it's, it is to ask the question, why? And I hope that from all of all everybody that's spoken and everyone that's um, been listening, that we've created some awareness and curiosity in whatever facet of uh, uh, information that we want to kind of or wisdom that we want to sort of like get across. And if you would like to carry on sort of like finding out about how I create curiosity and awareness of to make change in the way that um, people or successful women work, follow me on Instagram at Pepsi Godin. And okay. thank you very much, Ilona. Beautiful message. Thanks so much for sharing. Diane? Thank you. Thanks, Ilona. I so enjoyed meeting everybody and learning what everyone's doing. And I ditto that we all are on an interesting mission that seems to be in alignment. So uh, it was so much fun learning about everybody. Uh, I, gosh, I've had so many lessons, life lessons. I would say um, one of the biggest is when I started my business and my husband was nervous about it. And I told him two things. The first one is we just have to assume I'm going to be successful and the second one was, this isn't the last decision I ever have to make. <laughs> so I sort of ventured forward with that. And uh, I haven't had to make another one. So <laughs> it's all been good. Uh, and I would say that probably my website, helbigenterprises.com is the best place uh, for people to connect with me. They can sign up for a 30-minute consult. They can um, take a look at my podcasts, my books my programs, whatever. All right. Thanks so much. Jody. Hi to um, Alona. I want to thank you uh, for having me on today. Um, it is amazing to see how people across the world really are really trying to transform and help people in such a positive way. And that is just so wonderful. And I think my big life lesson was, you know, when I was growing up, everyone's like, oh, the way to someone's heart is through their stomach, meaning like food, feed them with love, feed them with all these things. But they're really, the way to your heart is through your mind and through your brain. And um, just 
being able to reframe either certain situations or um, just, you know, we all have the power to help ourselves. We have to be able to want to do the work and actually do the work to reframe, to take something that might be difficult or challenging and turn it into something positive. That doesn't mean don't feel all the feels associated with um, all those maybe negative or challenging times. But what I mean by that is turn it into something positive so that you can channel your energy into something more fruitful and making lemonade, um, you know, like Kathy said, um, moving forward. And so that's my big takeaway for everyone. And um, people can find me either at on Instagram at Flourish, F-L-R-R-I-S-H, or the, my website also www.flourishflourish.com. Okay, beautiful. Thanks so much for sharing, Jeff. Get myself off mute. Um, what a great, great conversation. I, no, I don't think there's any anything happens by accident. Everything happens for a reason. And there's a reason that we're all here today sharing this kind of uh, resonating these stories together. And thank you, Ilona, for inviting me and putting this together. Um, a couple of things I wanted to share that I thought really occurred to me was one, and I love what Irene was sharing Um you know, if we live a life, and this is, I'm writing a book right now, and the, I should have done it the last 10 years because I was retired. Now that I'm working again, I'm now getting busier. Um, <laughs> but if you live, you know, if you live to 100, and I think if we, if you watch the Blue Zones and Netflix documentary, we can all live, you know, full on and pop out, like I said. And we take the first, you know, 25 years out for education. From 25, our adult life starts till age 65. Um, the middle is 63, what we call retirement. And I forgot who shared it. I think it was Kathy talking about, you know, particularly she's her resident with women, resonating with women, but really with all of us, we talk about our retirement at age 65 or, you know, uh, that's really the, only the halfway point of our adult life. What life do we want to create? What add, what value do you want to add? What impact can you make? And that just um, really resonated with me. Some of the, the themes today um, that some of you shared. Um, I, um, I'd love to connect with anybody who'd like to, to, uh, explore more about what we're doing. And, you know, we're, we're, our mission is to impact a billion people's lives on the planet, disrupt the $2 trillion health and wellness and beauty industries, um, using tech, think of Uber or Airbnb or Netflix or Tesla, what they're doing with tech to disrupt their respective industries. We think we can really make an impact and empower people's lives. Um, and so my mission right now, kind of my mantra is, could we be the spark um, that creates a movement, a movement that could impact a billion people on the planet? So I'd love to hear from anybody. And I, I want to also thank the audience listening. Uh, you know, um, it takes something to sit and listen for, you know, an hour and a half, 90 minutes, two hours of your lives. Um, but I'd love to connect with anybody. Find, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's probably the best place to find me. Um, add me as a friend. Say hello. I'd love to connect with entrepreneurial people who'd like to align with our mission of helping to impact a billion lives around the world um, and help us promote this Project Helix, uh, which is due to actually be launched um, about one year from today. So it's kind of a, uh, there's a multi, you know, there's a, there's a, a billion dollar company behind it, developing it, um, huge investment uh, in, in tech, bringing tech and nature together. Um, and um, yeah, it'd, it'd be exciting to partner with entrepreneurial people who'd like to, to um, participate and, and, and help us reach that, that vision. Let's pop out, not dim out. That's my mission. Amen. All right. Kathy. Perfect. Yes. I, I too would love to, to thank you, Ilona, for bringing us all together. This is definitely an amazing group. And one of my life lessons, I think that I want to kind of reemphasize is kind of summed up in a quote that I love. It's a Howard Thurman quote. And he said, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is more people who have come alive. So to me, that just sums up so much of, you know, figure out what excites us, what inspires us, and just go do that. And I, I love how all of us here have kind of touched on how we are doing that in the world so i want to thank you all for what you're doing 
Um, for me, the easiest way to get in touch, LinkedIn is the social media that I'm on the most. My website is inspiredtenacity.com. I've got buttons on, on there for booking a chat and learning more about my books. One of my current book projects is called Passion, Purpose, and Possibilities, which I think everybody would fit into just perfectly. So <laughs> anyone interested in becoming an international bestselling author and sharing their journey, one chapter, <laughs> make it happen. Let yeah. me know. And yes, I just love this conversation. Thanks. It's wonderful to meet you all. Thank you so much, Kathy and Renee. Yes, I have to echo everybody's, you know, gratitude for you, Alona, for putting us all in, in this space together where we can now, you know, build relationships with each other and, and help each other out. So thank you. Um, well, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> what is my one, one, if you can, uh, this is also a uh, challenge for if you can focus on the one lesson that's coming out for you that you've learned from your personal development journey that you could share with us and your uh, all the amazing work, where is it that we can find out more information about you? Okay. Okay, so um, I think it's summed up in the quote from Henry Ford, like whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. And, you know, just being a human who has, and I know I'm, I'm not an exception here, but I know a lot of people that don't do what I have done in my life, which is to move, move, move home and start new jobs and then leave completely and be an entrepreneur. And, you know, it's just not typical. You know, we typically we amongst this crowd, it is but not not in general to leave a, a very comfortable environment where you're being paid every two weeks and uh, you have benefits and all this stuff. Right. And, and I could have just soared my way into retirement and gotten my gold watch and my, you know whatever else nonsense they give you when you spend 40 or 50 years of your life. Um, you know, an invisible jail is what I call it, only because it doesn't allow us to create um, and help this help kids the way they really need to be helped, and they're all put in, into a box. And um, it's just really important for me to to relay that to them that you know we can't fight the school system at this point. It's this is what we are by law have to do for our kids and. Yes, we could do homeschool and and or Montessori or you know charter schools, and they have a little more flexibility with what their their students learn. Um, but it's not feasible for everybody, right? So it, it's you know we are what we have to do is do is is play the the cards that we were handed, and that is to um, supplement our kids' education with very powerful and profound information that will help them become successful and fulfilled humans. So for me, um, learning, and, and that is one of my lessons too, really is the fear of going through that terror barrier of leaving a job that you're, that you were, you know, doing for so long because you were being called elsewhere. And a lot of people squash that down and they won't do that because for fear that what if it doesn't work, what, you know, we have to pay bills. Like I get it, you know, but when you have such conviction in what you want to share with others, it's, it's our duty to do that. So, you know, that's what I want our youth to understand is that they may have gone this way with school and they're going to go to college and do that thing and then get a corporate job, but it might not fuel their soul. It's not following their bliss oftentimes. And, you know, that leads to all these, uh, you know, mental health issues that, so, that people seem to just put band-aids on instead of really getting down to why um, someone might not love what they're doing. Maybe they weren't meant to do it, you know? And then they, then if they don't have a support system helping them to exit that and continue on their path of bliss and, and like I'm doing right now, like not everyone's going to understand it or support it. So it's, you know, it, it's, 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 a, it's in all facets, it's a hard, it's a hard transition to make from the norm to the outside of the norm. Um, but when you find a group like this, you don't, you feel like you're right at home, right? Like this is not, I'm, I'm probably explaining the same things you guys are all thinking or what, of what you've gone through with your journey. Um, but I think it's also important and I'll stop is that we 
put up those boundaries to allow ourselves to be who we authentically are and not worry about the outside noise. And I think that's what our, a lot of our youth is struggling with too, with this, you know, they're, they're born with a phone in their hand. So we have to roll with it though. We can't fight it because it's just evolving and it's, it's getting faster and quicker and tech is going, is taking over really. So I think the sooner we build our kids up with the, with the qualities of good, you know, self-image and confidence and understanding them, how their mind works and how they are in control of their own lives. Um, it'll help with all of this because they won't be seeking it outside or they'll, they'll realize half of it's fake or not, you know, people aren't showing their bad days on the internet. <laughs> They're showing their vacations, you know? So I think it's important for our kids to discern that, 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 yeah, how about they ha be happy for them and not jealous, you know, be happy that they're doing that. You'll get your turn, have gratitude for what you have. So um, I could keep going, but I'm, I won't. Where, where can we find you, Renee? I love it. I mean, you're so passionate about the work and there's so much work to do in this area for sure. So thank oh you. God. It's been a couple of years and it's been a lot of pivoting and all that, but I feel like I'm finally, um, you know, I finally feel really proud to talk about what I do. Um, because for a while it was like, well, I don't know what I'm doing yet, or I'm, I gotta do this and I have to do this. And I wasn't able to really verbalize, you know, what exactly I was trying to get across to people. Cause I just get so excited about it. But, um, so I have a website that just launched not too long ago. I still have to work on it. It's mighty minds, M I G H T Y minds dot us. And I have, um, you know, programs for kids, programs for adults. I, I also do group coaching, um, you know, and it's all based on the, on the topics that I had mentioned to you, Alona, of what, um, you know, I have 18 lessons and growing because every day I'm like, <gasps> I gotta do a lesson on that. <laughs> so it's growing. And, um, I, I've been speaking on stages, trying to get the, you know, the, the mission out there. Um, and I'm hosting a conference in Philadelphia in September. If anybody's interested, you can hit me up and get your get yourself fueled up, like so you can fuel it out to others. Well, thank you so much, Renee and everybody. Yeah, I'm sending my kid to your school. That's the school I didn't for. <laughs> so please do. Um, I would love it. Can I just say I want to thank all of my amazing speakers and you guys today. I mean, um, I have also been very frustrated with the world of transactional relationships for the longest time. So, which is why I really felt like we need to have these type of rooms and spaces. So, again, thank you so much for all your wisdom and all the amazing work and service that you're doing uh, out there in the world. And you are uh, contributing towards others and the significant work and vocation that you are putting your heart out there every day to to put out there and connect with the right people that need to hear the message and for you to be able to support them. I'm very grateful for your presence today. I'm very grateful for the work that you're doing. And I absolutely encourage everyone to further connect. Linking, LinkedIn seems to be a good channel for us, all of us to be further continuing these conversations and also to be able to further connect and find ways to support. As I know in the chat here, our speakers have naturally organically have found ways to continue to support one another. I want to thank you for always watching and supporting the Life School and for always uh, supporting our events so that we can bring more amazing, purpose-driven, heart-driven purpose uh, entrepreneurs just like uh, this amazing group of people here today. Uh, we all, I also have a community expert program inside our Life School community where we connect you with amazing speaking opportunities and we connect people together. So uh, if you want to stay tuned, there's a video that's going to be playing around some of the benefits around that community. But Again, I want to thank you for your time and thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you next time with another amazing event here at the Life School. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for attending. Bye. Are you looking for paid TEDx podcasts and free visibility speaking opportunities? with other like-minded audiences to put on your calendar. Speaking is one of those daily operational activities in our service-based businesses so that we can expose the visibility that we have, but also share our message and share our work with new audiences every day. Inside our C-suite community expert program here at the Life School, we have made this very, very simple for you. It's a plug and play system. You just fill out forms, 
and also place speaking opportunities onto your calendar without any overwhelm. We will strategically introduce you to high level quality connections that will move your mission and vision further faster. And also you'll get to participate in our own speaking events, magazine and podcast. Opportunities that we have here at the Life School with an audience and community of over 30,000 seasoned CEOs. For more information, I would love to invite you to go check out our website at alonalaparicoaching.com slash C-suite program. See you back inside the show.